previously on part one. God has a plan for your life, for each of our lives. And we need to let God finish what he started. Because our lives are no longer our own. We've been bought with a price. Now, the conclusion. You ought to put on some gospel music. You'll have a heartfelt desire to worship the Lord and the fellowship of God's people. And the best place to accomplish both those things is church. Church should be alive with souls getting saved and lives being rededicated. The preaching should stir up our hearts and fire up our souls for the glory of God. Amen. The music should prepare our hearts to meet with God. And when we gather together to worship the Lord, you should be able to sense, man, God's presence is all over this place. I can feel God's presence here. With so many dead churches today, the question, why seek ye the living among the dead? That's a good question. Folks need to get out of dead religions, leave dead churches, and find a place where God is in the house. Amen? Amen. Where there is life and the power of the Holy Spirit is present. As Christians, we also need to get away from the dark places that are pulling us away from God. Man, there's places I don't go. Because you know what? They're dark places. Right. I think of the demoniac of the Gadarenes. That man had a legion of devils in him, mentioned in Mark chapter 5. 6,000 devils or so. We are told concerning this guy that he had his dwelling among the tombs and that his often was bound with fetters of change and night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. This guy was in bad shape. Like a lot of people outside these doors. You see them and you say, man, they're not, they're not doing well. They're in bad shape. His life was in heavy darkness and he was more comfortable around the dead than the living. He was shackled and chained and he was able to break those chains like it was nothing. But he wasn't able to break free from the bondage of sin. Big difference there. He could break those earthly chains, but he couldn't break those spiritual chains. Right. It's possible there's someone here today going through the same thing like that fellow, wandering around in the graveyard. You find yourself being drawn to dark things. Maybe you're dabbling in the occult, messing with witchcraft. Maybe you're here today and addiction has taken taking you to some dark places. You know why that demon-possessed guy was so comfortable in cemeteries and graveyards? Probably because a lot of his friends were buried there. And he was heading down that same path of destruction until he found Jesus. Amen. That demon-possessed man got gloriously saved and his life was forever changed. Jesus was able to set him free from the bondage of sin, was able to deliver him from a life of darkness to the light of salvation. Lastly, he brought him from that dead place he was dwelling into the land of the living. When the people of the city found him, he was clothed and in his right mind, right. sitting at the feet of Jesus. Friends, that's a transformed life right there. A changed life. That's resurrection power that is able to transform us from dead men walking to a child of the king. Amen. If someone claims to be saved and they're still living like a dead man, still walking in darkness, still clinging to old sinful habits, you got to wonder about that salvation. Now, I mention them a lot because there are some that claim to be Christians, but they're living dark lives. They have no interest in spiritual things, no desire for the things of God, but find themselves being drawn to dark places. They're more comfortable around the lost and darkness crowd than being around God's people. That don't make sense. There's something bad wrong with that. It's possible that they're also like this demoniac hurting themselves. Suicide rate among young people is at an all-time high. Or maybe they're not hurting themselves, but they're just living such reckless lives. Spring break takes place now. Every year you hear about people falling off of balconies because they've been drunk, getting run over by a car because they're walking in traffic. Whatever it may be, they're living reckless lives. <clears throat> Whatever the situation if your life is going in the wrong direction, you need to get turned around going God's way before it's too late. And if you claim to be saved, you need to figure out why you got no desire for church or the Bible or, or why you don't have interest in the things of God. Why seek ye the living among the dead? Good question. Which brings us to the final resurrection words to live by. And it's also found in Luke chapter 24, verse 6. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. 
resurrection words to live by. He is not here, but is risen. The Lord Jesus rose from that tomb and returned to heaven where he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is risen. I like what the two disciples said after they had seen Jesus, the risen Savior, on the road to Emmaus. Luke 24 states that they returned to the apostles saying, The Lord is risen indeed. In other words, there ain't no doubt about it. No question about it. He lives. There is encouragement in those words because since Jesus lives, we live also. John 14, 19. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live. Yea, ye shall live also. Whew, glory. I don't fear death anymore. It used to tear me up worrying about death. Asking God, well, if I can die, let me die like this, let me die like that. It doesn't matter anymore. Whatever way I die, I'm going to live again. Here's another verse. 2 Timothy 2.11 Is a faithful saying, For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Hallelujah. Here's the thing. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven to know the glory of God. We can experience kingdom living now, today. Notice what we're told in Ephesians chapter 2. You don't have to turn there. I'm just about done. Ephesians chapter 2. Beginning with verse 4 says this. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, he hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved. And he has raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. The moment God quickened us, gave us new life through salvation, the moment that happened, from that moment, positionally, our lives changed according to this passage of scripture. I know we're here at Broad Street Baptist today, but positionally, we are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And it's important that you realize your position because the enemy wants to beat you down and look in the, at your problems and your troubles and how unfair life is. But according to the word of God, we're in heavenly places at this very moment. Because we've been adopted into the family of God and because now we have unlimited access to heaven and because now we've got God living within us through the Holy Spirit, we can experience kingdom living now. I like what Jesus told them Pharisees. Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Where is the kingdom of God? Where is it? And Jesus answered in Luke 17, 21, Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. What does all that mean? It means we've got to change our attitude about life. Stop living a defeated life. Stop living a life as a victim. Stop seeing yourself as a loser or a failure. Stop living a powerless, defeated life. Focus on all your troubles and your problems and how unfair life is. And start focusing on eternal things. Right. Get your mind focused on heavenly things. Victorious things. Here's a good verse. Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, right. where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. Man, that's good counsel. Life's going to knock you down sometimes. Life's going to discourage you at times. Health problems are going to weigh you down at times. It's part of life. But guess what? we got heaven waiting for us. Right. This is as bad as it's going to get. Whatever you're going through right. right now, this Thank world you. is as bad as it's going to get. Yeah. We're heaven bound. Glory. We'll soon be out of here. Just like the risen Savior, we will rise up and be caught up to heaven. I'll close with this. In Luke 21, Verses 27 and 28, the Lord Jesus said this, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a great cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. That's it. That's what we need to be doing until Jesus comes. Lift up your head, first of all. Don't let life get you down. Lift up your head and look to the eastern sky. Because Jesus is coming back. Yes, he is. He's coming. 
What a wonderful thing that we serve a risen Savior. And it will soon be reunited with family and loved ones for all eternity.